Hello everyone, welcome to my channel, MM Class. Today we will be discussing about circuit analysis. Topic is solving AC circuits. Now let us define first impedance and admittance. So we obtain Ohm's law in phasor form for any type of element as Z is equal to V over I or V is equal to Z times I where Z is a frequency dependent quantity known as the impedance and of course it is measured in ohms. So the impedance Z of a circuit is the ratio of the phasor voltage to the phasor current I and is measured in ohms. So as a complex quantity, the impedance may be expressed in Z is equal to R plus Jx. So R is the resistance part and Jx is the imaginary part and denotes the inductive or capacitive reactances. So we say that the impedance is inductive when X is positive or capacitive when X is negative. So admittance, on the other hand, is the reciprocal of impedance measured in Siemens. As a complex quantity, we may write Y as Y is equal to G plus GB. G is called the conductance, while B is called the susceptance, and all are expressed in Siemens, or MOS. So in solving AC circuits, so it's just the same as how we solved DC circuits before, it's just that uh, in this case, we are dealing with complex numbers. So the methods that we have used before like mesh analysis, nodal analysis, KVL, KCL, so we will apply it also here. Now let's have some examples. We are asked to find the V of T and I of T of the circuit. Let us first find the capacitive reactance 1 over J omega C equal to 1 over J omega is equal to 4 times the capacitance equal to 0 0.1 farad equal to negative J 2.5. So to find the current, we have I of T is equal to V over the impedance Z equal to 10 angle of 0 or just 10 volts all over the 5 minus j 2.5 so our i of t in rectangular form is equal to 1.6 plus j 0 0.8 so in phasor form that is equal to 1.789 angle of 26.57 degrees ampere. In time domain form, we have 1.789 cosine of given is 40 plus 26.57 degrees and ampere. So don't forget the units. Now to find for the voltage drop in our capacitor V of T. It's just simply current multiplied by the capacitive reactance X sub C. So 1.789 angle of 26.57 degrees multiplied by negative J 2.5. So our VFT is equal to 4.47 angle of negative 63.43 degrees. Volts. Or in time domain, we have E of T is equal to 4.47 cosine of 40 minus 63.43 degrees volts. So as you can see, our current leads the voltage by 90 degrees if you look at the phase angle. Now let's proceed with the next example. So same process earlier, so let's just look for inductive reactance J omega L. So J times omega is equal to 10 times 0 0.2 Henry. That's equal to J2 ohms. Then solving for the current, I is equal to V over Z. V is equal to 20 angle of 30 degrees. Our impedance is equal to 4 plus J2. 
Then our current is equal to 4.472 angle of 3.43 degrees ampere or in time domain form we have I of T is equal to 4.472 sine of 10 T plus 3.43 degrees ampere. Now for the voltage drop in our inductor, so we have I multiplied by the inductor reactance. So 4.472 angle of 3.43 degrees ampere multiplied by X of L which is J2. So our voltage is equal to 8.944 angle of 93.43 degrees. So, our V of T in time domain is equal to 8.944 sine of 10 T plus 93.43 degrees. Now, as you can see, the voltage leads the current by 90 degrees. So, for the impedance combination, if we have a series connected impedances, total impedance equal to the summation of impedances. For calculating the current, that is equal to I is equal to V over Z1 plus Z2. And we have a voltage division relationship. V1 is equal to Z1 over Z1 plus Z2 multiplied by V. V2 on the other end is equal to Z2 over Z1 plus Z2 multiplied by V. For the parallel combination, so it's just the same as how we do with resistance before. So the equivalent impedance is equal to 1 over Z1 plus 1 over Z2 and so on and so forth. Then we have a current division principle. I1 is equal to Z2 over Z1 plus Z2 multiplied by I. And I2 is equal to Z1 over Z1 plus Z2 multiplied by I. Now let's have some examples. Now find the input impedance of the circuit in the figure below. Assume that the circuit operates at omega is equal to 50 regions per second. Now we have a circuit here with 2 millifarad, 0.2 Henry, and 10 millifarad. So let us first get the reactance. So 1 over G omega C equal to 1 over j given omega is equal to 50 then capacitance to millifarad so that is equal to negative j10 then 10 millifarad is equal to 1 over j omega c and we have 1 over j times 50 times 10 millifarad that is equal to negative J2, then 0 0.2 Henry, J omega L. That's equal to J multiplied by 50 and 0 0.2, and that is J10. Now we have series here, and the series here. So our impedance, input impedance Z and is equal to negative j10 plus the parallel combination of 3 minus j2 and 8 plus j10 we have negative j10 plus 3 times 8 is 24 minus j16 plus j times 30 then we have negative j2 times j10 which is 20 then we have 11 plus j8 then let's just simplify we have negative j10 plus 44 negative j16 plus j30 we have j14 over 11 plus j8 now we can multiply the conjugate 
44 plus G14 multiplied by 11 minus G8 over 11 squared plus 8 squared. Or I can just type this in our calculator and complex mode. We'll get negative G10 plus 3.22 minus G1.07 or a 3.22 minus G11.07 ohms. And that is our input impedance. 3.22 minus G11.07 and don't forget the unit ohms. And that's it. So in our next example, determine the input impedance of the circuit in the figure below. Automag is equal to 10 regions per second. Now let's look for uh, the reactances first. So 0 0.5 millifarad, 1 over g omega c equal to 1 over g times 10 times 0 0.5 millifarad. That is equal to negative g 200. Then 8 Henry is equal to G omega L, G times 10 times 8 Henry equal to G 80. Then 1 millifarad equal to 1 over G omega C, or 1 over G times 10 times 1 millifarad. And that is equal to negative G 100. So we have here a series and parallel combination. So, our input impedance is equal to 80 minus J200 plus the parallel combination of 200 plus J80 and negative J100. Now let's just simplify. 80 minus J200 plus 200 times negative J100 is negative 20,000 J. Then we have J80 times negative J100, 8,000. Over 200 minus J20. So our input impedance is equal to 129.5 minus G 295.04 ohms. So that is our answer. And for our next problem, we will be looking for the voltage drop in inductor. So to solve this circuit, let us find the reactances first. You have 1 over j omega c, that's equal to 1 over j times mega given is equal to 4 times capacitance is 10 millifarad. So we have negative j25, then inductive reactance equal to j omega l, this j times 4 times 5 henry, and that's equal to j20. So we have to look for the voltage drop of, of the inductor. First, we have to find the input impedance. 60 plus parallel combination of negative J25 and J20. So simplifying, we have 60 plus 500 over negative J5 or 60 plus 100 G. So if we try to redraw the circuit, so we have a series combination of 60 ohms and 100 G. And we will be looking for the voltage drop B sub O. So in this case, we'll be using voltage divider, 20 angle of negative 15 degrees multiplied by 100J over 60 plus 100J. So our answer is equal to 17.15 angle of 
15.96 degrees volts. Next problem. So let us first find the reactances. So J omega L J times 10 times 0 0.5 NV. That's equal to J5. Then we have 1 over 20 equal to 1 over J omega C. J times 10 times 1 over 20. That's equal to negative J2. So we have here a parallel and series combination. Input impedance j5 is in parallel with 10 ohms and in series with negative j2 simplifying we have j50 over j5 plus 10 minus j2 so our input impedance is equal to 2 plus j4 minus j2 that is 2 plus j2 so, to solve for the VO or the voltage drop in our capacitor, let us supply voltage divider 20 angle of 100 degrees multiplied by negative J2 over 2 plus J2. So, we have 14.142 angle of negative 35 degrees so what if we have a delta to y or a y to delta transformation so impedance combination is just the same as how we do the resistance combination before when dealing with delta to y and y to delta transformation now let us have some examples So, to solve this circuit, let us first transform this y into delta. So, I will just draw a guideline for me to easily visualize the transformation. And then, I will assign this as A, B, and C. So, to solve for A, let us consider the sum of the products of the adjacent branch. J4 times negative J3 plus negative J3 times 8 plus J4 times 8 all over the opposite of A is 8 ohms. So that is equal to 12 plus J8 over 8 or 1.5 plus j then letter b same process so let's just copy the 12 plus j8 and consider the opposite is negative j3 so b is equal to negative 8 over 3 plus j4 then letter C is equal to 12 plus J8 over the opposite, which is J4. So it is equal to uh, 2 minus J3. So we have to parallel B and 2 minus J4 and assign it as D. Okay, so... D is equal to 2 minus J4 times the value of B, which is negative 8 over 3 plus J4 all over the summation of the 2. So our D is equal to negative 16 minus J28. Then next, parallel the C and this 8 plus G6 and assign it as letter E. So that is 
C in parallel with G6 plus 8. So let us solve it here. So our C is 2 minus G3. Then we have G6 plus 8. So our letter E is 304 over 109 minus J times 222 over 109. So I will just um, redraw the circuit. We have here 12 ohms, then the letter A, and D, and the letter E. So we can now series D and E and assign it as F. So F is equal to D plus E. And this equal to negative 16 minus J28 plus E is 304 over 109 minus J times 222 over 109. So that is equal to negative 1440 over 109 minus 300, uh, 3274 over 109 J. Now we can solve for the input impedance parallel of A and F and series with 12. So we have 12 plus A is equal to 1.5 plus J. Let's just put the F value. So, after simplifying, our input impedance equal to 13.6 plus J times 0 0.9988 or 13.6 plus J1 ohms. So, let us convert this into its phasor form or polar form. 13.64 then we will look for the current that's just simply ohm's law so i is equal to v over the impedance that we got our voltage is 50 angle of zero and our input impedance equal to 13.64 angle of 4.2 degrees so our current is equal to 3.66 angle of 4.2 degrees ampere so that's it for today if you have some questions just comment below thank you for watching